Hi guys, this is Ray Snow. Last time we implemented player attack animation and hit detection. So now we can attack monster and yeah, kill them. In this video, we will add some elements that make the battle more interesting, such as monster death effect and monster health bar, some sound effects, and also modify the monster's AI a little bit. Okay, first, this effect. And to do this, we create some variables. The first one is boolean alive call true. And another boolean dying default is false. And also counter dying counter. Then inside of this player class, go to this damage monster method. And instead of making the monster null here, be that monster I, we change this dying state to true. And inside of this entity, I go to this draw method. After this invincible if statement, we create another if statement. If dying equal true. And here we do a kind of a dying animation. So we just call the method from here. Dying animation or something. And create this method. Void dying animation. What we're gonna do here is we add kind of a blinking effect to the dying monster. So okay, let me type first. First we increase this counter and then if dying counter is equal or less than five then I'm gonna copy and paste this here. Ah, okay, we need a graphics 2D. Fix 2D. And pass G2 from here. And okay, so we're gonna change the monster's alpha to zero. And okay, copy this. And now if the encounter is greater than 5 and uh, greater or equal to 10, then we change this to 1. So we repeat this several times. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Like this. And okay, change this to. 0, 15, 15, 20, 40, and 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And okay, finally, if dying counter is greater than 40, then dying equal false and alive equal false. Yeah, something like this. So what we are doing here is in every five frames, we switch the monster's alpha to zero or uh, one. So this way the monster will look like, you know, it's blinking. And when the counter hits 40, it dies. So this is how it works basically, but uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of typing the same phrase again and again like this. So I make a method public void change alpha. So let it handle this. So we're going to pass graphics to D, G2 and also float 
alpha value and we're going to just copy this and paste replace this with alpha value and okay so change alpha and pass g2 and 0f in this case all right uh, paste paste i mean yeah we don't need these so so and okay zero one zero one zero one zero one something like this and okay i think i'm gonna move this here Okay. Also, I don't like typing these numbers manually like this because maybe we will want to change the interval from 5 to 10 or something later. Then we have to rewrite all these numbers manually like 10 and uh, 20 or something and 21. That's a uh, too much pain. So instead, so first create in integer equal 5 and so instead we, we put i here so here times 2 times 2 times 3 Yeah, like this. So this way, even if we want to change the interval from 5 to 10, we only need to change this i. Then others will automatically adjust the change. And now we go to the game panel. And inside of this update, update, uh, we check if the monster is alive or not. If monster i dot alive equal true, then uh, what? I'll need the public, I think. Hmm. So yeah, if the monster is alive, then we can update and uh, okay. If monster is not alive then so here we can put null to this monster and also we're gonna add one more condition here and monster i dot dying equal false wait not the dying animation what the what what is happening here uh, hmm? Okay, this is also need to be public, I think. Public. Okay, let's check. All right, so let's attack. Two, three, oops, four, okay. Hmm, mm, okay. So monsters, blink and die. You know, there are many ways to describe monster's death and we used a relatively easy method. But if you don't mind creating some extra sprites, then you can create some unique death animation like monster exploding or something like that. So you just need to switch the sprite here instead of changing alpha. Okay. And I think it's about time to add some sound effects. So yeah, I have prepared three more sound effects. Hit monster, receive damage, and a swing weapon. Yeah, anyways, so let's copy these three sounds. 
to uh, okay, where is it? Sound package here. Sound. All right, and uh, open this sound class, and we're gonna add three more sounds. So five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. And the five is uh, hit monster. Receive damage. And also swing weapon. Then inside of this player class, here, yeah. So when attacking becomes true, we play the swing weapon sound. P dot play SE uh, index seven I think yeah seven also when player touches a monster and receive damage we play receive damage sound effect and when player gives some damage we play hit monster sound effect and okay and also uh, when monster touches player up here okay uh, so this is receive damage so six yeah something like this okay let me check real quick mm. swing sound and uh Okay, receive damage. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Next, let's display monsters health bar. You know, in this entity, it's a draw method. Yeah, somewhere around here. Monster HP bar. First, we set the color. Set color. And I'm gonna use uh, RGB color. So something like this. So it's basically red with a little blue. And then draw a rectangle to that fill rect uh, screen x screen y and the width is tile size and the height is like a 10 pixels or something and also we want to display this red rectangle slightly above this entity so I'm gonna subtract uh, like minus 15 from screen Y also we're gonna check if type equal to so which means this entity is a monster so then we can display the HP bar okay let's check Okay, hmm, all right. Okay, then create the outline of this bar. And for the outline, I choose uh, another color. So set color. And I'm gonna choose kind of like a dark gray. So 35, 35, 35 and draw another rectangle and we draw it before this red rectangle and also makes it slightly larger than this rectangle so like slightly so minus one and minus 16 and with this, so tile size plus two, 
and the screen y is uh, so 12 okay uh, yeah hmm okay looks good but right now player's attack doesn't affect the, the health bar so yeah let's change that so to apply the monster's HP to the bar, we create two variables. Double one scale scale equal uh, what? Uh, double GP dot tile size divided by max life. And double HP bar value call one scale times life. So with this first rhyme, we divide the bar length by the monster's max life. So this way we know the length of one HP. So for example, if the monster's max HP is 2, it will be 48 by 2, so one scale is 24 pixels. And if max HP is 4, the one scale is 12 pixels. And based on this one scale, we can find out the current length of the bar. So we can use this as this red rectangles with ah oh, okay we I think we need to cast because this is double int okay uh, let's check okay let's attack yeah like this Hmm. And uh, right now these HP bars are displayed all the time. What we're gonna do next is uh, the H HP bar only shows up when player hits the monster. And if player doesn't engage the battle for a while, then the bar disappears. Okay, first create another variables. Okay, here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, boolean HP bar on equal false. And also another counter. So HP bar counter. And uh, so when the monster becomes invincible, Oh, by the way, we can use that uh, change alpha here as well, I think. So change alpha 0.4f g2. We don't need to type this anymore. And here too. Why? So when monster becomes invincible, which means player attacked this entity, we display this HP bar. And uh, okay, we add another condition here. HP bar on equal to and while this is true, we increase the counter. So HP bar counter plus plus. And when it hits a certain number, HP bar counter like uh, 600, then we reset the counter. 
equal zero and the uh, HP bar on equal false. So this time I set the period as 600 frames, so which means 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, the bar disappears. And but one more thing. So if player attacks the monster again while the bar is displayed, so here we reset the counter equal zero. So with, without this, the bar disappear after 10 seconds, even if player keeps attacking the monster. So yep. Let me change the slime's HP a little bit. Right now it has four, okay, let's increase like 20 or something. Okay, so right now no HP bar is displayed, but if, if we attack, yeah, so it shows up. And uh, if we don't, attack them for 10 seconds then it disappears but if we you know keep attacking them uh, yeah so it won't disappear as long as we are engaging in the battle and finally, we add a little touch to this monster's AI. So right now, the slime is kind of oblivious of player's attack and doesn't really react about it. But we change that. So inside of this entity, oops, so, uh, we create a new method. Uh, probably after this set action void uh, damage reaction or something I oh, know yeah uh, this will be blank so yeah here it's blank but we override it in the slime class uh, damage reaction First, we reset the action lock counter. Then uh, change its direction. Equal gp dot player dot direction. So when it receives damage, it starts moving in the direction that player is facing. If player is facing to the right. The monster moves to the right, so it's moving away from the player. And finally, in yeah, in this damage monster method, we're gonna call that method. So, star i damage reaction. All right, let's check. All right, attack. Mm. Yeah, like this. Mm. Okay, so when the monster receives damage, it changes its direction and moves away from the player. It's just a simple AI, but still, I think it's a nice touch and it gives the slime a little character kinda you know they are pretty passive but of course you can set whatever behavior you want so it's totally up to you okay I think that's it for now so now we have established a basic battle system in the next video we will work on the player stats so we add more parameters to player such as strength, dexterity, attack, defense, level, experience, stuff like that. Because as I said at the beginning, 
this will be an action RPG. So thanks for watching and uh, until next time.